Hello, South Street Baptist Church. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to say thank you so much for having me back. It is a privilege and an honor to be able to bring you the Word of God today. Before I start, I want to give honor where honor is due. I want to first honor God and thank Him for life and just the ability to be breathing and to be here and to share with you. I thank my uh, uh, spiritual father, Apostle Guillermo Maldonado, and I also thank teachers John and teacher Letty for believing in me and for trusting me with so much. Uh, for me, it's a privilege and an honor to work alongside of them. And I also want to honor pastors Giddy and Irene. Thank you so much for uh, giving me the pulpit today and for giving me the opportunity to speak into your lives. Uh, for me, it is a privilege and an honor. I know I've said it before, uh, but you don't let just anybody stand in your pulpit. And you always have to be careful who it is that you're bringing in, who's bringing the Word of God. And so I'm so thankful and grateful to both of you. Uh, I love you both. I love your family. And and I bless you both today. So again, thank you all. And again, it is a privilege for me to be able to bring this word to you today. And uh, so today we're going to be talking about a topic that um, I am somewhat familiar with. It's, and it's a part of my life. And as a believer, it should be a part of each and every one of our life. And that is evangelism. So uh, God has called us all to be a witness, called us to be his witnesses with supernatural evidence everywhere that we go to walk in the supernatural power of God through the power of the Holy Spirit that was given to us. So God's desire since creation was to have a relationship with us, with you and with me and with all of humanity, but obviously because of sin, that sin separated us from God, but he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross and to, to rise again and to restore that relationship uh, so that we could uh, com have that communion and co communication back with him. And so the, one of the reasons that God created us was to have a relationship with him and because he loves us and because uh, God loves us, he loves people. And so God has also called us to love people the way that he loves them. And one way that we show God's love is by telling other people what he has done for us and to us and in us and the changes that he has made in our lives. Amen. So God called us to be his witnesses with supernatural evidence. You don't have to be a, an evangelist or sent as an evangelist or have an evangelistic uh, calling or even be sent in the fivefold ministry as an evangelist to share the truth of the word of God and to share what God has done in your life. And that is what today uh, we're going to be talking about. Amen. So all uh, we have to do is, is share what God has done for us. So we are all called to evangelize and to win souls. Amen. So God called us to be witnesses. Jesus told us in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that we should go and disciple. His word says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. You will be my what? You will be my witnesses. So there in Acts, he tells us that you will be my witnesses. He didn't say you might be, or maybe if you want to, he said, you will be. In other words, it was a commandment from God. And this is part of what we call the great commission, right? So he said, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So Jesus tells us there we're supposed to be witnesses. It's not optional. It's not maybe if I want to, or if I'm feeling, you know, oh, I don't feel like it today. No, we are called no matter what to be witnesses of Jesus Christ. And so we're called to go to Jerusalem. So it's not necessarily the Jerusalem in, in 
Israel, our Jerusalem is the people that are closest to us. That's our family, the people that are surrounding us on a daily basis. We're called to go to Judea. Judea is your neighbors, the person living next door to you, across the street from you. The person that you see at the gas station, at the movie theater, the person that you see as you go about your daily life, your co-workers, right? That's your Judea. And then we're called to go to Samaria. Samaria is nearby city. So we're not called to stay at local with the gospel. <coughs> Excuse me. We're called to go out, to spread it out. So to go to nearby cities, to take it to other people. And then he says to the ends of the earth. In other words, worldwide domination. Amen. So we are called to do to, uh, to worldwide domination, you and I. Isn't that awesome? We're called to dominate with the gospel of Christ, with the gospel of peace, to take it to every nation, tribe, and tongue. It was never God's plan to, uh, to stay contained in one place. It was never God's plan to keep his kingdom only in one location, but it was uh, to expand his kingdom to the uh, four corners of the earth and of the entire world. And that is what you and I as believers are called to do, right? Have you read that in your Bible the same way I read it? So before I get into evangelism and what is evangelism, why should we evangelize or why are we called to be witnesses and how can we, how do we witness? I first want to hit a few points of why we don't evangelize. There's about five or six. There's, I'm sure there's more, but these are the main ones that I felt from God to share with you guys. The first reason that we don't evangelize is fear of rejection. Say that with me. Say fear of rejection. A lot of times we don't go to people and tell them about God or witness to them about what Jesus has done in our life because we are afraid that they're going to reject us, that they're going to say, no, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want this God that you have, or, you know, I'm good. So we're afraid of being rejected. Nobody likes to be rejected, but you know what? When you are rejected because of the gospel, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting God. So we can't uh, not evangelize because somebody's going to reject us. Remember again, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting God. A second reason that we don't evangelize is fear of persecution. You know, a lot of times we're afraid of what people might do. And even nowadays in the times that we're living in, uh, there's so much violence in the world. Here in the United States, there's riots and, and just crazy things happening over the, the smallest thing. And a lot of times we're afraid to evangelize or tell people about God because we're afraid that they're going to persecute us, that they're going to hurt us, that maybe they'll beat us up. Maybe uh, we'll get fired from our job or, um, you know, the wrong person will hear about it and we'll get in trouble. We'll be thrown in jail. Who knows what type of persecution you are afraid to endure, but we cannot be afraid to speak of Jesus because of persecution. The word of God tells us that persecution will come, but we should consider it a, a, a blessing to suffer for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And, uh, uh, an example, one time I was in a, on a trip years ago, several years ago, I was on a mission trip to the country of Albania. And we went with a group that was probably about 30 of us we went to a small village in the north and uh, we started to preach the gospel and to tell them about Jesus. And for some reason, they did not like what we had to say. And they began to stone us. They picked up stones and sticks, whatever they could find on the ground there in front of them. And they began to stone us, to throw stones at us. So we had to cover ourselves and to, to get our group out of there quickly. And we actually ended up sleeping. Um, we had to sleep in the jail that they had there, which was like this um, brick building with maybe three rooms in it. And that was where we had to sleep so that we would be safe until we could leave the next day. And so we got there and since they, they persecuted us, they didn't want to hear what we said. We kind of washed our hands and, and decided to leave. It was, 
you know, we, uh, their blood is not on our hands uh, because they didn't want to hear the truth. And so we went and we were not afraid to be persecuted. And so you cannot be afraid to suffer persecution for the gospel. Amen. Another reason why uh, people don't evangelize or the church, people in the church don't evangelize is for fear of failure. You know, you're, uh, I've, I've thought it myself and I've heard other people say, is it, well, what if I pray for somebody and they don't get healed? Have you ever asked yourself that question? I, I know I have, you know, God, I see this person in a wheelchair or they're, you know, they're, um, walking with a walker, they got a cane or they have a cast. What if I pray for them and they're never healed? Well, you know what? That's not on me. I've, I've come to realize that's not on me. That's on God. <laughs> Amen. So we have to put that on God. Uh, I am not the failure. I am not a failure because somebody doesn't get healed. You don't know the seed that you're planted and maybe somebody else will come along and they'll get healed. Or maybe they will um, call on the name of the Lord at a later time and, and God will heal them. We don't know why people don't get healed right away, but God is in the business of healing and we cannot stop uh, spreading the gospel because we're afraid that people are not going to be healed or saved. Amen. Uh, another reason that we don't evangelize is because we have a lack of the fear of God. So if we have a relationship with God, we should love him. We should uh, want to honor him and stand in awe and reverence of him. And we should want to tell others about him and what he has done, what Jesus has done on the cross for us. But what happens is because we don't really fear the Lord um, uh, and we don't have a strong relationship with him, we don't tell other people about God. And sometimes, you know, a lot, uh, maybe we think, well, I don't, I don't know the Bible. I don't know the word of God. So I can't come and, uh, or refute. I can't come against or refute what somebody might say about the Bible, but you know, we can't go with fear uh, of man. We have to walk in the fear of God. Amen. And uh, the, uh, the last reason I want to mention of why we don't go out and evangelize is because of a lack of love for people. The Bible and throughout the gospels, you see Jesus going and ministering and he, there will be crowds of people and you would see, it says that he had compassion on the people. He had compassion on the man. He had compassion on the woman. He had compassion on the child. He had compassion. And, and that's because he loved the people. And we as believers need to get that same compassion. We need to have that same love for the people around us. A lot of times, instead of having that love and compassion, what we do is we judge based on what we see. You know, we don't know what people are going through. Maybe they're on the streets, they're panhandling, they're begging for money, they're struggling. And instead of being like, well, you know, pick yourself up. What are you doing there? No, and, and, we, and we judge them instead of going to them with love. So it's time that we return back to the love of God and to the compassion, to having compassion for people the same way that God has compassion for them. Amen. So that's why we don't evangelize. Now, why is it that we should evangelize? And what it really, what is evangelism? Evangelism is just taking the gospel, which is the, the coming of Jesus, the death, the burial and resurrection of Jesus and sharing it with the world. That is what the gospel is. Amen. So we evangelize. Why do we evangelize? We evangelize because it is a mandate and an order from Jesus. And we mentioned it before at the great commission in, um, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, it says, and Jesus said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. So he said, go. He didn't say, you know, if you're feeling up to it, you know, maybe when you're not so tired, when you don't have anything else to do, then, you know, maybe go tell people about me. No, he said, go say with me, go go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. And also we see in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, it says, then Jesus said to them, 
All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So he again, he says there to go. And it wasn't an option. Going and evangelizing, telling people about Jesus is not not optional. It is a commandment from God. Amen. In other words, there's no option and we can't not do it because we don't want to, or because we're afraid of what might happen. We cannot not evangelize because uh, we're afraid of persecution. We're afraid of what people are going to think about us or what they're going to say, what they're going to do, how they're going to react or respond. You never know what will happen. Amen. Uh, the Bible says that one sows or plants a seed, another waters it, but God makes it grow. So you don't know if you're planting or if you're watering. And if you do either, God will come and make that seed grow and produce fruit in that person's life. It might be then and there. It might be in a day, a week, a month, 10 years. You never know, but it will always be worth it to plant a seed or to water and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. A second reason why we evangelize is because the harvest is ready. In Luke chapter 10, verse two, he, it says that he, Jesus told them the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore to send out workers into the harvest field. You and I are those workers. You and I are the ones that are being sent. So we need to, when, when we're asking God to send workers, we're asking God to send us. And that means we're asking God to provide us with an opportunity to go into all the world. In other words, we're saying, God, I am ready to be mobilized like an army, like as a soldier to go out into the battlefield, into the front lines and to preach the gospel and share the truth, life-saving truth to those around me. Amen. So the harvest is ready. Say with me, the harvest is ready. Another reason why we evangelize is because Jesus is coming back. Amen. God is on his way back. Jesus is coming again. And in Mark chapter 13, verse 10, uh, it says that until this gospel is preached, he cannot come. So until we don't go out and preach to every nation, every tribe, every tongue, Jesus cannot come back. And I don't know about you, but the way the world is turning out right now, I'm ready to go home. I'm ready. I'm like, okay, Jesus, I'm ready. Let me go preach. Let me evangelize to whoever I need to evangelize to so that you can come. You know, if you want me to go to Africa, I'm going to Africa. You want me to go to Asia? I'm ready. Here I am. Send me. You know, like the prophet. Here I am, Lord, send me. I'm ready to go so that you can come back. So if you want Jesus to come back quickly, you know what the, the key to, do, to that happening is? That's right. It's you going into all the nations. You going into your Jerusalem, your Judea, your Samaria, and to all the ends of the earth. So the, the more we evangelize and spread the gospel, the quicker Jesus will be able to come. Amen? Uh, another reason why we evangelize is because the blood of the unbeliever will be on our hands if we don't. You know, like I mentioned uh, with the, the, the testimony of Albania, we washed our hands and we walked away. And uh, we see that in Acts chapter 18, verse 6. It says, but when they opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent of it. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. So we wash our hands uh, of the person that doesn't receive the gospel of truth. And their, their blood is no longer on our hands.
Amen. I, I, when I get to heaven, I don't want there to be so much blood on my hands when I stand before God. And uh, truth be told, I know that there, there will be because there's been times where Jesus has said, Hey, go tell this person that, or go preach to this person. And, you know, because maybe I was in a hurry or uh, all the, the things that I mentioned at the beginning, they're one of the reasons why we don't evangelize came. I was afraid of being rejected. I was afraid maybe I didn't speak the language. And so I, didn't go whatever uh, excuse a lot of times we make up excuses for why you know sometimes oh no that's the devil guess what it's not the devil the devil will never tell you to go share the gospel so that's how you know it's Jesus and so I know and I stand with a heart of repentance and with sorrow before God for those people. And I pray that the ones that I didn't go to, that he will be merciful and send others to them so that they can plant a seed or water it so that they might be saved, even because I didn't heed the call in that moment. And that's something that I don't ever want to, to feel Again, I know, you know, we're not perfect. I'm going to make mistakes, but I, I pray that my heart will be sensitive always to hear the voice of God when he tells me to speak with somebody. Uh, that happened one time at a gas station. I was at a gas station. It was late at night and I was the only one at the pumps and the, the cashier was on the, um, he was outside and he was sweeping and it was just him and I right there and we were close and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit began to speak to me about him and say he's going through a rough time go and pray with him and so I went up to him and I said hey um, my name is Tabitha I believe in God I don't know if you believe in God but I believe in God I believe in the Bible and Jesus and God has uh, told me that you're going through a rough time right now uh, may I pray with you and he said, you know what, I am. Yes, you can pray with me. And I, I began to pray. It was in Spanish, and I do speak Spanish. It's not really that great. Uh, but, I, I mean, I can, I can have a conversation with somebody, but to pray for people, am I, you know, I'm thinking in, in English, and then I translate in my head. And so sometimes it gets jumbled. But, you know what, the Holy Spirit was there, and he did the job. And I prayed for the guy. And when I finished and I looked up, he was tears were streaming down his face and he didn't receive Jesus in that moment but you know a seed was planted in his heart that God loves him and that God cares for him enough to bring this this white girl into his path to to pray for him and for God to remind him that he had a purpose in his life amen so we uh, we we have to listen to the Holy Spirit. I want to always be sensitive like that to the Holy Spirit when he speaks. Amen. Another reason that we need to evangelize is because of the reality of hell. I don't know about you, but I don't want anybody to go to hell. And Jesus, even the word of God tells us, Jesus, like, God doesn't want any to, to perish, but they all come to repentance. And so we uh, hell is eternal. And I don't want anybody to go to hell because I didn't preach to them or because I didn't tell them that salvation is available. Amen. And the greatest deception of the enemy, the greatest lie that Satan tells us uh, is that hell doesn't exist or that it's not real or that we are living hell on earth. You know, and I've heard people say it, you know, if hell is real, I'm living it. And the truth is they're not. Hell is so much worse. And you can read in the word of God about hell. In Luke chapter 16, you can read about the rich man and Lazarus and how the rich man was in, in hell. And he came to Lazarus and told him, you know, uh, the, the, the fire never stops and I'm thirsty. So you can feel in hell. Hell is a place of torment. It's a place of, uh, where the, the fire doesn't go out and the worm never dies. And I don't want to go there and I don't want anybody to be sent there because of my, my fear. Uh, no, it's not my fear. Because of fear of being rejected or being persecuted. Amen because I'm too afraid of what that person might say or think about me. Amen. 
Another reason why we evangelize is to share in the blessing of the gospel. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 23, Apostle Paul says, I do all this for the sake of the gospel so that I might share in its blessings. And I don't know about you, but I want to share in the blessings of the gospel. Amen. And what are the blessings of the gospel? In Romans chapter 1, verse 16, it tells us that one of the blessings of the gospel is salvation. It says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation. So it brings salvation to you and it brings salvation to those around us. So you can rest, you have received the blessing of the gospel of the blessing of salvation. And now it's our responsibility to take that blessing and share it with others. We can't keep blessings to ourselves. Amen. Another blessing of the gospel is deliverance. In Mark chapter 16, it says, And these signs will follow those that believe in my name. In my name, they will drive out demons. So when you receive Jesus, when you receive the gospel of truth in your life, and it's a part of who you are, you are become delivered. You have deliverance. God is going to deliver you from demons. He's going to deliver you from your past, deliver you from oppression. And and you be, uh, you gain that blessing of deliverance so you can go out and deliver others. Amen. If you've been delivered from anything, you can't keep that deliverance from, uh, for yourself. You have to go share deliverance with those that are struggling, with those that are sick, with those that are in depression, with those that have suicidal thoughts, those that uh, want to kill themselves, that, that they're dying, they're sick, they're lame that are lonely and sad, those that are on drugs, those that are in fornication, that are uh, alcoholics, you have the ability to go and to set them free from those demonic oppressions. Amen. So don't keep it to yourself. Another blessing of the gospel is healing. In Matthew chapter 10 verse uh, 8, it says, heal the sick. It's as easy as that. And that, again, is not an option. There, we have so many commands. Jesus says, go heal the sick. It's not an option. It's a blessing. You have received the blessing of healing in your life. Now it's your responsibility to take healing to somebody else. Amen? And another blessing of the gospel is freedom. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 it says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So Jesus set us free through the work of the cross so that we can walk in freedom. Amen. And so stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. So a blessing of, uh, of the gospel is freedom from the yoke of slave of sin, from that yoke of slavery to sin. So you have become free. Now take that freedom and share it with somebody else. Amen. We, those are our responsibilities. And we go and we, uh, to evangelize. Another reason we evangelize is so our labor is not in vain. You know, why are you going to church every day? Why are you doing what you're doing? Why do you get up early? Why do you go to a house of peace? Why do you go through uh, the leadership classes? Why are you doing it? If you're not doing it with the purpose of taking that to somebody else, everything that you're doing is in vain. That's kind of a, uh, hit you right, uh, right in the heart type thing, right? I don't want my, my 46 years of, of being a Christian to be in vain. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, it says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor uh, in the Lord is not in vain. So I don't want what I do for God, what I do in ministry, I don't want any of it to be in vain. Amen? So we go out because we don't want to just be a Christian uh, doing everything in vain. I want it to matter in the kingdom. Amen. So that is why we evangelize. Now, how is it that we are supposed to evangelize? Say with me, how do I evangelize? Number one, you evangelize in the power of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter one, verse eight, the Bible says, but you will receive power 
power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. So if you have Jesus, if you have the Holy Spirit, you have power. So you need to go out, not in your, it's not your strength, it's in the power of the Holy Spirit, the power to heal the sick, the power to cast out demons, the power to raise the dead. You have to go out with the power and you have to go with authority. Matthew 28, 18 says, and Jesus said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And I don't know about you, but Jesus resides on the inside of me. And because he's in me, I have his authority. So I can go preach the gospel like I know what I'm talking about. I can go heal the sick like I know what I'm talking about. Amen. Because I have authority in that area. In the Bible, it says the Pharisees and Sadducees and the people, when Jesus would preach, they would be amazed because he would preach with such authority. He said, who gave you authority? They didn't ask him, who how do you heal the sick? But he said, who gave you this authority? Well, guess what? Jesus gave us his authority. And so we have authority to do the same thing that Jesus did. In fact, Jesus said, greater things you will do than these. So we should be out there in the streets doing more than what Jesus did. And today, God is activating something in you. Today, God is waking something up on the inside of you. A mobilization is taking place. We cannot be complacent any longer. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a complacent Christian. Just warm and appeal, warm in a seat on Sundays. I want to do something for the kingdom. I want my salvation to count for something. I receive salvation and I'm freely going to give it. Amen. Another way we evangelize, we need to go with boldness. So we have to go out in the power of the Holy Spirit. We go with authority and we need to go with boldness. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. You cannot be ashamed of what Jesus has done for you. I'm not ashamed. When I was with a man at the gas station I was not ashamed when I was in Albania I was not ashamed I was at the movies at one time and I walked out of the movie theater there was a girl sitting there waiting for her ride and I started to walk to my car and the Holy Spirit said no go back and speak to her I went and I told her about Jesus she she uh, she said the prayer she didn't want to but she said it reluctantly but you know there was a seed that was planted and I was like you know what I can't be ashamed I'm not going to be ashamed of what Jesus did for me I used to be depressed I was sad I was lonely I was afraid I hated myself but you know what I can't I, I can't hold on, uh, hold it back any longer in Jeremiah he said your word is like a fire shut up in my bones like, I, I can't not preach the gospel I have to let it out I can't can't keep what God has done for me to myself. We have to share it. It is time that you stand up and share with somebody else what God has done for you. You know, not, not necessarily share. You can share with the person next to you, your family. Go, go share with somebody that's not saved. Don't be afraid to share that God uh, took you out of drugs, that he took you out of alcohol. He healed your marriage. He healed your body. He healed your mind. And, you know, there's so many you have uh, uh, not schizophrenia but you had mental problems mental struggles and God healed you you got to take that and now you have authority to go heal people with that same thing so you can't keep it to yourself amen and we have to go with that mentality of the kingdom that, you know, it's my responsibility to expand. You know, we're going to expand territory. You're going to expand territory. Uh, you know, you hear the prayer of Jabez. Jabez said, you know, God, expand my territory. Today, God wants to expand your spiritual territory. He wants to expand your influence uh, as you go out and take the gospel to the streets. Uh, God is going to expand uh, the, the influence of people. There's some of you like, you know, I don't know anybody. Who can I evangelize? So you have people at work. You have the people that live next door to you. You have unsaved. You have Facebook. Go evangelize on Facebook. There are so many means to bring the gospel of truth to the nations, to your Judea, your Jerusalem, your Samaria. Amen. So don't be afraid. 
to take what God has done for you. Amen. That's your evidence that, uh, you know, when he said, be my witnesses, you are a witness. You know, can you imagine walking into a courtroom as a witness and you don't have any evidence? They're going to throw you out. They're going to, you know, what are you doing here? Why are you here? No, but we have evidence. I have evidence. Why? Because I'm, I'm not afraid. I don't walk in fear. I, I don't, I'm not depressed. I'm not, I'm not living in that sadness or that loneliness, that depression anymore. Amen. I'm not living un, in the, uh, with oppression from the enemy. I'm free and I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm in my right mind. And so now I need to take what God has done. That's my evidence. My testimony is the supernatural evidence that Christ is alive. Amen. And so you need to take your testimony and share it with somebody else so that they can see that Jesus Christ is alive today. Jesus is not dead. Amen. But he is alive. So without evidence, you are not a credible witness. You are an illegal witness. But if God has done something for you, if he's changed your life in any way, you are a uh, you are a legal witness of the truth of Jesus Christ and it's your responsibility amen to take that evidence that supernatural evidence and share it with others we see that also in Hebrews chapter 2 it said God also testified to it by signs wonders and various miracles and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will so God will testify through you with signs wonders and miracles of his gospel. Amen. In Luke chapter four, it says the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind and set the oppressed free. So the spirit of the Lord is coming upon you today like never before so that you can proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to proclaim freedom them to the captives to proclaim re recovery of sight to the blind and set the oppressed free you have to go with the evidence and the testimony of your own life as proof that Jesus is alive and what he wants to do in somebody else's life amen so you and I have been called to be a, a, a living witness we're not going, we're not deceiving anyone because the evidence is real. When I talk about my testimony, I, I'm not lying. It's evidence. I'm, I'm not perjuring myself in the, the court of heaven. Uh, but when, you know, Satan is the accuser of the brethren, he comes to accuse. And I say, you know what? I was that, but now I'm not. You know, maybe you were a drug addict, but now you're delivered. You were in sin, and now you're not. You were in fornication, now you're not. Your marriage was falling apart, but God restored you. Your children left, and they were out on the streets, but God brought them back. You wanted to commit suicide, and maybe you even tried it a time or two, but now God has delivered your mind, and you know who you are. He's giving you identity, and now it is your responsibility to take that and share it. And you know what? Any area that you have been delivered in, any area you've been healed in, you now have a, 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 like an extra measure of authority in that area. Isn't that amazing? You have authority because you were set free in that. And because you were set free from whatever it was, if you were set free from suicide, you have authority to deliver others from suicide. We have authority in every area, but it's like you have a special authority for that. Amen? So go and deliver the people. Go and set them free. Go and share the gospel of truth with everybody that you see. Amen. That's what God has called us to do. That was the, the great commission. Like we said, we have been, you and I have been commissioned to go and testify of what we have seen and heard. And we see that in Acts chapter 4 verse 20. And it says, as for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen or heard. So we we have to go and tell them and maybe we haven't seen Jesus with our own eyes but we have seen what he has done in our lives and so now it is our responsibility to take that truth 
and share it with the world. Amen. It doesn't matter what opposition might arise. As a witness, you cannot be silent. If you see a crime happen, you cannot be silent. You know, in the natural, you can't be silent. You have to stand up for what is right. You have to stand up for the truth. And it's the same way in the spirit as believers. We cannot, we cannot be silent any longer. The world needs us. If the world ever needed the truth, it's now. Amen. If they ever needed the truth, it is now. So if you have experienced Jesus in your life, you cannot be silent anymore. You know, many people think that they don't have testimony uh, because, you know, they didn't kill anyone. They, don't, they never did anything bad. But your testimony can be how God transformed your life. You know, I used to think that because I grew up in church that I didn't really have a testimony. You know, I'm like, well, I didn't really kill anybody. I've never done drugs. You know, God never had to, to bring me out of a, an abusive relationship or, or bad relationships. He didn't have to, uh, he, I wasn't delivered from that. And one time the Lord said, uh, you know, I mean, there was always opportunities. Don't get me wrong. There was always opportunities to do all of those things. Even as grown up in church, you know, you face peer pressure and all those things. And um, as I got older, one day the Lord said, you know what? All of those things that you said no to and you walked away from, you gained authority in those areas. And, and that is my testimony that through the grace of God, it wasn't my own strength, but it was through the grace of God because I had the fear of the Lord that God kept me and he, he preserved me so that I didn't have to go through any of that, uh, uh, any of those things uh, that, that a lot of people go through. And that is my testimony, a testimony of God's grace, a testimony of God's love. And even though I, I didn't go through any, uh, through any of those things, I still needed the redeeming work of Jesus Christ on the cross. I still needed, uh, his blood to cleanse me and to, to cover me and to wash me and to heal me. And so maybe you're one of those people that thinks, you know, I don't have this, this super amazing testimony because I've had a really good life. But you know what? You have the testimony of salvation that you could have been. I can tell you what I could have been, but because of the mercy of God, I was not. And I am not. Amen. So God is so good. God has pulled us all out of something. And like I said, I, I had very low self-esteem. God had delivered me. He healed me, healed my emotions. He healed my heart. And so God has pulled us all out of something. And so we are all obligated to talk about it and to share it with others. Amen. And as the church, as the body of Christ, you know, we are God's hands, we're his feet, we're his body. We owe the world this experience. We owe uh, the world an experience with the supernatural power of God, an experience with salvation, with healing, with deliverance, with freedom, with the same things that we have received. Amen. So we have to, to tell people, you and I, we have received salvation and power at no cost to us. And we are commanded by God to give it away to others. What you have received, the Bible tells us in Matthew 10, 8, it says, freely you have received, freely give. So this is your call to action today. You have received so much from God, and now it's your turn to give. God doesn't give us so that we can keep it to ourselves. But he gives it to us so that we can share it with others. Amen. Everything you have received, we are called to give it out. I'm not called to, to keep my salvation to myself. I'm called to share it. And I'm going to do whatever, I, whatever it takes to do it. Amen. In 2 Timothy uh, 1 verse 7 eight, it says, For the Spirit of God does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. You know, God has not given you a spirit of fear. Another version says, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a sound mind. And I declare that over you right now, that spirit 
spirit of power, that spirit of love and a sound mind to go into all the world, to go into your Jerusalem, to go into your Judea, your Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. To, to join in the suffering of the gospel by the power of God, by sharing the truth of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Amen. So that is your call to action in, in this week. It is to take the gospel of truth and share it with somebody else. Don't hold it in. Let it be like Jeremiah said, like that fire shut up in your bones that you cannot help but preach it. And I want to I wanna just pray with you. First, I want you to, to repeat a prayer with me. Amen. So if you can do me a favor and just stand wherever you're at. Uh, maybe you're at home. Uh, I don't know, you know, you're at home, you're at the office. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. But I want you to stand. And I want you to stand so that you get out of your comfort zone. That's what God is calling us. He's calling us to get out of our comfort zone. You can't stay comfortable. Don't stay comfortable. Push yourself to get out of your comfort zone. So I want you to stand up and I want you to repeat this prayer with me as I close. I want you to, to close your eyes. Don't be distracted by your family. Don't be distracted by those around you. But I want you to say this with all of your heart. Say with me, Heavenly Father, today I thank you for the privilege of being a witness of Jesus Christ. I ask you to forgive me for not sharing with others what you have done in my life. Forgive me for not preaching the gospel like you commanded me to. Forgive me for not sharing the blessings that I have received with others. Lord, I repent. And today, I ask you to give me that boldness to walk in the authority that you have given me through the work of Jesus on the cross, to go to my Jerusalem, my Judea, my Samaria, and to the ends of the world. Here I am. Say it. Say, God, here I am. My hands are yours. My mouth is yours. My feet are yours. Send me. Lord, I will go. Today, I make myself available. Come on, say it with all your heart. Say, today, I make myself available to be your witness wherever I go. I will share the gospel. I will not keep it to myself. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, to be with me. Say, say, be with me as I testify of what God has done in my life. As I testify of what I have seen and what I have heard. In Holy Spirit, today, say, today I ask that you give me a fresh and filling of your spirit. Renew my passion. Renew my fire. Renew the fire of the living God on the inside of me. Put in me a love for the souls. Put in me the compassion of Jesus for the lost. Lord, baptize me again with the power of your spirit to be a witness that produces supernatural evidence, to heal the sick, to bring freedom to the captives, to cast out demon, to open the prison doors so that those that are in prison can be free. Today, Holy Spirit, be with me. Fill me like never before. And I make a decision. And I declare that from today onward, I will speak of what I have seen and heard. Because I was blind, but now I see. I was lost, but now I am found. I was sick, but now I'm healed. And so I cannot keep it to myself, but I will declare it from the mountaintops. Thank you, Lord. Yes, and I hear the Lord say, how, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. How beautiful are the feet of those that bring good news. Yes, thank you, Jesus. How beautiful are the feet of those that bring good news. Say, say God, I will bring good news. I will bring the good news of the gospel to those that are in need. I will bring the good news of the gospel to those that are 
struggling and I receive the power from on high to be your witness with power in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Before we go, I just want to declare over your life and I just want to pray. There's a few things that I feel to pray for. Amen. So I just want you to close in your eyes and lift up your hands and just receive. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I declare the power of the Holy Spirit over your sons and your daughters. I release authority. I release boldness and the supernatural evidence that is in their life. Lord, I activate that testimony that is on the inside of them because they all have a testimony and father right now in the name of Jesus I bind every spirit of insecurity I bind every spirit of fear I bind every spirit of doubt uh, and reasoning yes reasoning there's sometimes you reason uh, not going and, and preaching the gospel I bind excuses right now in the name of Jesus every lie of the enemy that will produce an excuse for for why they cannot go and preach the gospel. I bind it right now and I cast it out of their life. I cast out the life from their mind in Jesus name. And I activate that authority. I activate boldness. I activate authority and power in the name of Jesus. And Father I thank you that they will go with supernatural evidence in the power of the Holy Spirit to declare what you have done for their in their lives and for them and Lord that they will share without shame yes that they will be shameless when it comes to preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ in Jesus name and Lord I ask right now that you would baptize them Yes, baptize them with the fire of the Holy Spirit, that same fire that fell in Acts. Baptize them with fire. Renew their passion so that they would be like Jeremiah, that your word would be a fire shut up in their bones that they cannot hold back. Father, I thank you for your sons and daughters. I bless them and I declare that your presence goes with them in this week, everywhere that they go, every time that they share the gospel of Jesus Christ, they do it with power, with boldness and authority. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, I want to thank you guys. Thank you so much, Pastor Gideon Irene, for allowing me to come and bring this word. I hope it is a, a blessing and I hope it, it has mobilized you and it has stirred something up in you to bring you out of your comfort zone. You can't be afraid of what other people think. Amen. And I look forward to hearing testimonies of the souls that are going to come into the kingdom because you guys are going to go out with power and authority in Jesus name. God bless you.